Hello, and welcome to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving leak code problem 815, bus routes. Before we get into the problem, I would just like to kindly ask you to subscribe to my channel. I have the goal of reaching 1,000 subscribers by the end of May, and I need your help to get there. If you're enjoying these videos and you're getting value out of them, and most importantly, they're helping you prepare for your on-sites for those big fan companies, please consider dropping a sub. The bigger my channel is, the more videos I can make, and the more I can help you get into Fang. So, that being said, let's read the question prompt. You are given an array routes representing bus routes where routes of i is a bus route and the ith bus repeats forever. For example, if routes of 0 equals 157, that means that the 0th bus travels in the sequence 157, 157, 15, dot, 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 forever. You will start at the bus stop source, and you are not on any bus initially, and you want to go to the bus stop target. You can travel between bus stops by buses only. Return the number of buses you must take to travel from source to target. Return minus 1 if it is not possible. So, for example, if we have the routes, so the zeroth bus, so we can think of this as bus zero. Oops, let me change the color here to make it more visible. And this should be green. Oh, fuck. Sorry, bear with me here. Change the color. Green. Okay, cool. Should be able to see that now. So this is bus zero. This is bus one. So essentially, bus zero can go to stops one, two, and seven, and bus one can go to three, six, and seven. So we start at one and we want to get to six. So we hop on at one and we can see that the only bus that we can take there is bus zero, right? So we've started at one and we can go to, you know, stops two uh, and stop seven from here. So neither of these are our target. So that means that we're going to have to take either one of these and then see where we can go from there. So the bus one, um, we'll get off at three, six, and seven. So none of the, three and six are not any of these values, but seven is. So that means that from seven, we can write it until we get to you know three, and then we can write it until we get to six, which is our final answer. So we would need to take two buses, right? We got on here. This is the first bus we took. This bus zero, and then we got on. Um, we rode this to seven, and then from seven, we got bus one, which took us to six. So that's why we have two total buses that we took. So essentially what this problem boils down to, if you can't see it already, is basically going to be a breath first search of the quickest way we can get from source to target, right? We want to, well, if we can even get there, because it is possible that we can't actually make that route. So essentially what we need to do is do some sort of breadth first search where we start at uh, you know, our source stop and we try to get to our you know, target stop and we want the shortest path between them. So if we build a graph and this graph will be undirected, uh, we know that doing a BFS over an undirected graph will give us the shortest path possible between source and target. So, and again, we're looking for the least number of buses, so that's why we're doing a VFS. We could try DFS to just try to find all of them, but obviously that would be a lot more computationally expensive. We want BFS because our search will actually end as soon as we find an answer, which will be our optimal answer. So, the trick of this problem actually just boils down to how we actually build the graph uh, for this problem and do the BFS over it. So it's not exactly clear how we might do this. So let's take a step back and think about how we might build our graph. Okay, let's think about how we might build our graph here. Remember what we did when we went through the example was we started at one, because that was our source, and we basically looked at all the possible bus stops we could go from there. And then from there, we want to look which bus we could take and then which possible routes it had. Oops, so there should be a three and a six. So we're gonna need some sort of graph structure which contains the information for stops and buses because we're gonna need to keep track of which stops we've been to and which buses we've taken. Obviously, it's a BFS. There is the potential to get caught in an infinite cycle. So we do need to be careful that we don't take a bus multiple times if we've already been on it because we should have already reached the answer if that bus can take us there. So what we want to do here is we want to build our graph. And what we want to do with our graph is we're going to build a dictionary here to represent the graph. And what we're going to do is we're going to have, you know, as the key, it's going to be the stop. So, you know, one, two or seven. 
And as the value, we're actually going to have a set representing all the buses which stop at that stop. So we'll have this set here, um, you know, and this will just contain all the buses. And this will be our graph. So for example, if we built it for this one, it would look like, okay, for stop one, what are all the buses that stop there? It's just going to be, you know, bus zero. And then for stop two, what are all the buses that stop there? It's again, just going to be zero. Uh, for stop seven, what are all the bus stops, uh, buses that stop there? It's going to be bus zero and one. Um, and again, we're using a set here because if there's duplicates, we want to uh, avoid that. And what do we want to do? Uh, let's see, so we have three, and again, this is just going to be bus one, and then six, this is going to be bus one. So that's how our graph is going to look like for this example. And remember that we need two separate sets. So we're going to say visited um, stops is going to be one set. And then we're going to have visited, you know, buses. So the buses that we've taken so far is going to be another set. And then, you know, since this is a BFS, we're going to need some sort of queue. And what we're going to put into our queue is going to be simple. It's going to be the current stop that we're at and the route length that we've taken so far. So that way, when we reach the target, if we reach it, then we can simply return this route length and we're done. So essentially what we want to do is we want to kick off our, you know, um, our, you know, BFS from basically the source. And, you know, we've taken zero buses at this point. And what we want to do is, you know, we want to process our queue. So our queue is going to take, you know, whatever stop we're at. So say we're at source uh, one. So that means that, you know, our queue is going to be equal to, I guess, stop one and a path length of zero. So we're going to pop this from the queue and we're going to be processing, you know, the stop one and, you know, we have a route length of zero. Obviously, the stop does not equal to the target because one doesn't equal to six. Um, right. So one zero. So one doesn't equal to six. That means that we need to process it. And essentially, what are the other buses that stop at this stop for one? Well, it's going to be zero and we haven't taken any buses yet so far. So we want to add our current bus to it. So we're going to add to, you know, the vis oops, visited buses. We're going to say we've now taken bus. Oops, this should be bus zero. And what we want to do is what are all the stops along that route? Have we taken any of them? So we can stop at two and we can stop at seven, uh, neither of which we visited. So we can add them both to our queue. So that means that our queue now is going to contain, okay, we can go to stop two. And obviously we've taken one bus so far. So it's going to be one here. Uh, sorry, this is, we've taken, you know, one um, hop so far. Uh, and then, you know, we can go to seven and that would also be considered taking one. So then we can continue processing. So we now get to two, one, obviously two does not equal to our targets. So that means we have to continue processing. Uh, what are all the buses that we can take from two? Uh, it's just going to be zero, but we've already seen zero in our visited buses. So that means that we, we can't continue on this route because we will already have explored it. It's already in our visited set. If we did, we would just get caught in an infinite cycle. So actually this processing ends. So now whatever is left in our queue is going to be seven one. So we can pop that. Obviously seven doesn't equal to our target six. So we need to continue. So what are all the buses that are in seven? It's going to be zero and one. And obviously we've already visited zero, so we can't take that bus, but we can actually take bus one. Um, so we're going to continue on that. So that means that we're going to add this to our, you know, visited buses because now we've taken bus one. And what are all the stops that bus one um, can actually uh, go from here? So uh, we can look at for bus one, what are all the stops it can go to? It's just going to be its original route. So it's going to be three, six and seven. So we can add to our queue all the stops as long as we haven't already been there. So uh, actually, we haven't been tracking this so far, my bad. Uh, so what are the stops that we've been to? So we've been to stop one, we've been to stop two, and now we've been to stop seven. So that means that we look into what are all the possible stops for bus one, because we know we have to take it. So uh, three, six, and obviously seven, we can't go because that would just be an infinite cycle. So that means we add to our queue um, that we can go to bus three, uh, stop three. And then since we have taken a new bus, we can increment our count here. So now it's going to be two total. And then we can go to six and three. 
So now we're gonna process our queue further. So, you know, we have three, two being popped now. And then from three, you know, this doesn't equal to our target. And what is all the bus stops we can, or what are all the buses we can take at this stop? Uh, it's just gonna be one, which we've already taken. So that means that we can't go any further there. So that's an invalid path. Now, all we have to do is process the six, three. So we're gonna pop it from our queue. We get six, three and we're gonna check okay does six equal to six it does actually so that means that we found our um you know correct route and oops sorry this isn't three this is two um sorry this is two so so far we've taken a path length of two so now we can simply return r2 and that is the answer that we're looking for as you can see from the example that leak code gives us so essentially that's the approach that we want to take if this explanation was a little bit confusing don't worry once we go to the code editor and we actually write it out line by line it's going to be super clear uh and i'll break it down for you and hopefully you should understand a lot better usually the diagrams are a little bit hand wavy and it makes sense to me because obviously i've done the problem i know what the solution is so it's a little bit hard to kind of translate that into a diagram especially when i'm drawing with the mouse but let's go to the code editor it's going to be a lot clearer so i'll see you there okay we're back in the code editor let's write the code the first thing that we need to do is actually double check that our source does not equal to the target. If it does equal, then that means that we don't actually need to take any buses. We're already where we need to be and we can simply return zero because we don't need to take any buses. So if source equals to target, we can simply return zero. Now what we need to do is build the graph. And remember that the graph is going to be, for the key, is going to be a bus stop and the value is going to be a set of all the possible buses that stop at that bus stop. So let's define that. So we're gonna say graph is collections dot default dict set. And then what we need is also a queue because obviously we're doing a breadth first search and we use that and we use a queue to do that. So we're gonna say queue equals collections dot deck, oops. And remember that we're going to be starting at our source and currently we've taken zero buses. So let's now build the graph. So we're gonna say for bus route in enumerate routes. And remember that the structure for routes is that routes of zero represents the zero, sorry, that routes of i represents the ith bus and then all the values at that ith index are all the stops for that particular bus. So we're going to say for stop in route, we're going to say graph of stop, we're going to add the bus to it. So now we've built our graph. And before we actually do the BFS, remember that we can have cycles here, uh, because obviously these buses just continue forever. And we need to actually return an answer, we don't want to get caught in an infinite cycle here, because we're never going to return, and we're going to fail the interview. So let's make sure that we create visited sets for both the buses and the stops to make sure that we prevent ourselves from getting caught in a cycle. So we're going to say visited stops is going to be an empty set. And we're going to say visited buses is going to be an empty set. Now we can actually start our BFS. So we'll say while queue, and we're going to pop from our queue. So we're going to say the current stop that we're at, and our current route length is going to be q.pop left. And what we want to do now is double check that our stop doesn't equal to our target. If it does, then we can actually just return our route length because that means that we've reached our destination. So we're going to say if stop um, equals to target, then we're done. We can just return the route length. Otherwise, what we want to do is we now need to traverse all the buses that stop at our stop and double check that we can actually take them. What does it mean that we're allowed to take them? Basically that we haven't taken it before. Remember, we don't want to get caught in that infinite cycle where we just keep taking a bus over and over. So we're going to say for bus in graph of stop. So basically all the buses that stop at this current stop, what we're going to do is we're going to say if the bus is not in visited buses, obviously we don't want to take it again. We're going to say visited buses dot add the bus. So we want to make sure that we don't get caught in that infinite cycle. So that's why we're adding it here to our set. Now what we need to do is for this bus that we're about to take from our current stop, we need to see all of the stops that it can go to and whether or not we've already been there. So we're going to say for stop in routes, oops, routes 
of bus. So all the stops that this bus can take, we're going to say if stop not in visited stop. So basically, if we haven't already been to that stop, remember, we don't want to get caught in an infinite cycle. We're going to say visited stops dot add stop. So we're going to add it to our visited set. And then we need to add it to our queue for further processing. So we're going to add that stop. And we're going to say that our route length is now going to be incremented by one because we're now taking a new bus. So all we need to do is oops, run this queue. And either we're going to return our answer here or our queue will break because there won't be any more processing to do, which means that we were not able to reach our target destination from the source. So we can simply return minus one as the problem tells us. So minus one if it's not possible. I'm just going to run the code quickly, make sure I haven't made any. But uh, what did I not close? Where is this line 30? Oops. Okay, cool. Glad we did that. Uh, let's just okay, cool. So that seems to work. Let's submit this double check that it works. And great. All right, cool. The first time I tried to record this, I don't know what happened, but I got a TLE. Um, so what is the time and space complexity for this algorithm? Well, for this problem, essentially, in the worst case, every single uh, bus will go to every single bus stop. So that means that when we build our graph, we're going to have, you know, uh, like basically an n by n structure in the graph, because every single bus can go to every single bus stop. So it's going to be big O of n squared in the time because we would need for every bus potentially to go to every single stop in order to find our solution in the worst case. And similarly, because we could have that structure represented where every single bus goes to every single route, we could potentially have to represent that in our graph. So our space is actually also going to be big O of n squared. So that is your complexity analysis for this problem. Um, this one is a little bit weird. I think it's kind of tricky to realize how you're going to set up the BFS for this. It's not exactly straightforward, um, but hopefully this solution has um, basically made it easy for you. I think once you've seen this one, it's quite easy to remember how it's done. I don't think it's particularly that difficult. It is kind of one of those aha moment ones where, uh, okay, maybe you won't figure it out on an interview, but if you've seen it once and then you get it a second time, like you'll get it like that, no problem. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe to my channel. If there's any videos or topics you want me to make videos on, please let me know uh, in the comment section below and I will be happy to get back to you guys. I just need like a topic, um, you know, a leak code problem number or just, you know, anything you want to leave in the comment section below. System design, product design, anything like that. Just let me know and I will be happy to make those videos for you guys. Anyway, thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.